What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again, and today I was going to go over the differences between overclocking for Ethereum and overclocking for Ravencoin. So, if you guys are planning on moving from Ethereum to Ravencoin, or in the future if Ravencoin becomes more profitable and you need to switch over, you have a video to reference to hopefully make that transition a bit easier. Today, we're going to be using the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte as an example on driver 470.05, which is the developer driver that NVIDIA accidentally released, unlocking the full mining potential for Ethereum on the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. But before we get into it, here's a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the world's leading VPN service with over 35,000 servers worldwide in 77 different countries. Use Private Internet Access to access geo-restricted sites including YouTube, Netflix, and exchanges safely with their strict no-logs policy. It is available for all platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and many others. You can use one subscription to protect up to 10 devices simultaneously with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Personally, I use it at the router level with Flash Router's easy-to-manage GUI. Use the referral link in the description for up to 77% off when signing up, making your privacy less than $3 a month. Welcome back. So as you guys are probably familiar with at this point for mining Ethereum, your overclocking focus is going to be on dragging the power slider down and of course increasing the memory overclock. What this does is increase the hash rate because it is a memory intensive algorithm and then it reduces of course the core clock when you turn the power consumption down and it reduces the power consumption allowing you to pay less on your power bill and mine more from overclocking the memory. This has been pretty standard for overclocking procedures on Ethereum since basically its inception. Things changed, however, when we started moving to different algorithms, especially when we were talking about Ravencoin in the early days with the algorithm known as X16R. They then went to X16RV2, and then now they finally moved to Kapow. Once you saw that essentially the AMD performance of the algorithm improve, you could pretty much take a safe bet that they are now utilizing a lot more memory intensive workloads than they had been in the past. If you guys would like details on the comparisons between X16R and Kapow with the, of course, improvements, let me know in the comment section below because that gets pretty interesting from a technical perspective. But today, what you really need to understand is that essentially, Kapow is now going to primarily focus once again on memory overclock like Ethereum or ET hash. And so what we want to do is go ahead and start overclocking the memory primarily first. And then from there, we would move into overclocking or undervolting the power slider, not really undervolting, but sliding down the power slider. Now for AMD cards, of course, you may want to undervolt. And if you guys would like another video on this, focusing on AMD GPUs, let me know, I'd be happy. Please let me know if you're interested in the 5000 series or if you're interested in the 6000 series because they differ quite a bit on Kapow. That being said, over here, we already have kind of a sample up ready for you guys to go on the RTX 3060. And as you can see, we've taken the power limiter down only 9, 10% to 90%. And then we overclocked the memory to 1400 megahertz or plus 1400 megahertz. We have not overclocked the core because if we overclock the core like we had previously, we aren't getting enough return on the core overclock as we would necessarily like. I have played with, of course, turning the power limiter further down and then increasing the core clock, but that doesn't function as well in Windows. However, we should go ahead and mention that HiveOS does see some improvements on your power consumption versus your hash rate because it can lock that power in a lot better. Meaning essentially, if you 
turn the power down to like, let's say 160 watts on this GPU or 150 watts, you can still compensate that core overclock and overclock it a little bit more and get a little bit more dialed in. That being said, if you're on Windows, it's not really gonna matter enough. You want to be right around that 90% power limiter because if we turn it further down, we start losing hash rate performance and turning the core clock up in this particular case on this GPU does not show any improvements. So it's gonna look very very similar to Ethereum. The only difference is going to be a slightly higher power limit, which is gonna put it at 152 watts at 24.26 mega hash. Like I said, pretty much the only difference now between this and an Ethereum overclock is going to be how far you can turn that power limiter down to reduce your power consumption. So while this is currently what we are at with, of course, your Raven coin, let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum. So for Ethereum on this GPU, the overclock we have in is a power limiter at 80% with of course the same memory overclock and core overclock. If we go ahead and open a miner real quick, we will use T-Rex because we were using T-Rex for Raven and we are gonna go ahead and open Ethermine here and give it a sec to go ahead and get the numbers out after it builds the DAG. Okay, and as you guys can see, it reports 49.31 mega hash a second at 135 watts. A big note here is that we are down on wattage quite a bit for ET hash compared to Kapow. So we won't be paying as much on our power bill to run this on ET hash. The big difference, once again, like I stated, is going to be that power limiter and basically being able to turn the power limit down further on Ethereum than on Kapow. If you guys would like a Linux how-to or a Hive OS how-to, please let me know and we can do a comparison over there because it does vary a little bit. Now, finally, you can use what to mine or something along those lines to get an idea of estimated revenue. I would be careful here as it is always shifting. But one of the things that you can look at, of course, is going to be the power consumption to of course the hash rate on it and see if you get you know more benefit at, out of turning the power further down on each given algorithm. At this current state, of course, Ethereum is going to be more profitable at 493 a day after power and Ravencoin would be at $3.19 a day after power if you go ahead and clock in these settings for this particular GPU. Now where it could get interesting, for example, is if we cut out of here and we go into back into Ravencoin. So let's get that set back up. And what I wanted to show you guys was an example of how you can calculate this out. So if we go ahead and on Ravencoin, turn us down to 80% on the power, right? And then we open Ravencoin and get it running. We'll see what the hash rate's at. So at this point, we're at 135 watts at 23.20 mega hash a second. So if you're comparing and just trying to figure out Kapow, you could come in here and do 23.2, knock the power consumption down, and we're just gonna record this, right? So this is 319 after power, and we can calculate it, and we would get 279 after power. So increasing the power consumption to 100 and 52 watts is clearly, or 312, sorry. But if we take a look at what it was previously, which was the 319, we could we do see essentially that we are still more profitable by taking the additional power consumption. This fluctuates on a daily basis, and of course it will fluctuate on your kilowatt per hour. So in what to mine, you wanna make sure that you put in your estimated kilowatt per hour here as well. Mine's eight cents at the house, for example. So if I put that in, you know, we would go up to 318 here, but then if we did the 24 mega hash a second at 152 watts and calculated that out, you would see that we're still more profitable by taking the hit on the power. So that's kind of the things you really want to be looking at when you are tuning these cards in, especially for Ravencoin, because less power doesn't always mean that you're going to make more money, and it will be dependent, of course, on how much you pay for power, as well as how much revenue you're generating extra from increasing the power limit. Now, it is important to note that, of course, the 
current settings that we have for the RTX 3060 in particular does have it at its highest power limit without reducing your hash rate. So if going over to 100% on Ravencoin in the power consumption, which also adjusts the, the core overclock, right? If we do that, then we aren't seeing any sort of gain other than losing money from clicking in the power consumption. Now, if you guys would like a video on other coins compared to Ethereum, like Cortex or Conflux, please let me know, and whichever one gets the most votes, we can follow this video up next week with another comparison between, let's say, Ethereum and Conflux overclocking, because those start to vary quite a bit differently as well. But hopefully what you see here is that it's not that hard to transition now from Ethereum to Ravencoin from an overclock perspective. In fact, if you just switched over the algorithm and your mining pool and started mining Ravencoin, you might not really have to do anything. While I would suggest, of course, turning your, turning your power limit up. On the RTX 3060s, 3060 Ti, 3070s, 3080s, and 3090s, just going ahead and cranking up that power limit by a little bit will help significantly. On the 3060 Ti's, 3060s, and 3070s, I'm at about 160 watts on Ravencoin, while we're at about 140 watts on Ethereum. That, once again, changes depending on the algorithm. If you guys would like algorithm comparisons, please let me know as well. We have a lot of ideas on the channel. I'm super excited. Hope you guys are excited too. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell because I see only about 11% of you have notifications on and we upload daily, sometimes multiple times a day. Today's a little different because I got some other stuff to do that's still related to YouTube, but doesn't include making videos. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.